So this is the object finding rover and as you can tell it's inspired by the Mars Opportunity rover. However this rover is actually quite smart and is supposed to be a personal assistant to help us humans back down on earth. This rover does this by using voice recognition to get a user's command. Once it has this user's command, then it uses computer vision and machine learning models to actually look at the environment and to use that to either follow you or to go pick up one of 90 unique objects and then in turn bring that object to you, making it a personal assistant. Now at the start of the video, you would have seen this robot using that voice recognition to get my command, using its computer vision plus machine learning models to actually find the object I told it to find, and then using this robotics led to pick it up and bring it to me. However, the coolest part of this project is actually most of this rover is 3D printed and it's powered by the commonly available Raspberry Pi. Plus all the code, 3D printable files and building instructions are all available freely down in the description in the Instructables post linked below. So next, let's dive a bit deeper and actually understand how this rover works. We'll start with the voice recognition. The voice recognition is powered by the Snowboy Raspberry Pi library. Snowboy is an ultra light and customizable voice recognition platform that detects hot words for the Raspberry Pi. Now the advantage of detecting hot words is that hot word detection is a lot more accurate and uses a lot less CPU power than detecting whole sentences and all the audio that's coming to the Raspberry Pi. Furthermore, hot words are easily customizable and Snowboy does this excellently while using only a couple percent of the Raspberry Pi's limited CPU processing power. For this rover in particular, I use the weak word robot to start issuing it commands. Once the rover hears the weak word robot, it'll turn on the orange LED and it'll start listening for the main command, such as, you know, follow me around or uh, fetch me a banana, uh, get me a cup of water, etc. The advantage of using a weak word is that it minimizes any false positive commands that it might hear due to the vibrations of moving around or any ambient sound. Moving on, next let's cover the computer vision and the machine learning aspect of this rover. Now as you saw earlier, this rover actually uses a webcam to stream video and process that video in, through a machine learning object tracking model to actually pick out objects in the frame. Let's start with the follow me command. Now the follow me command with this rover will actually have the rover follow you around the house by tracking your face. Now how this works is actually quite simple. Once you actually say the command, the rover loads up a specific computer vision model that's optimized for detecting faces. Next, the computer will actually set up a left and right boundary on top of the webcam's frame. Then based on these boundaries, the robot can simply turn to recenter you if your face crosses into the right or the left boundary. Well, that's actually quite simple, isn't it? Now the rover can actually pan left or right, depending if you move left or right. But that's not it when it comes to following you. When the rover wants to successfully follow you, it has to follow you going forward and backward too, right? So how does the rover measure if you're walking away from it or coming towards it? Well, actually, this is quite simple as well. The rover does this by calculating the area of your detected face in the frame. That means it'll take a snapshot of your detected face area. And then if you walk further away from the rover, your area will naturally get smaller and smaller. And then once it passes a certain threshold, the rover knows, okay, you're getting further away and it needs to catch up to you to maintain the same area. If you come close to the rover and you're gonna overtake it, it sees that your face area is getting bigger and bigger in the webcam frame. So it'll appropriately move backwards to maintain the same area. By maintaining this area, it's able to do a fairly good job of actually tracking the distance and maintaining an appropriate distance from you. Moving on. For objects the rover is actually trying to pick up, it does a very similar trick of seeing if the detected object is in the left or the right of the frame and appropriately centers itself up to pick up the object. Now for objects, we actually can't use the same area calculation to detect if you're close or further away from an object because objects all differ in size and we want to actually go pick it up. So we need the exact distance to the object. For this, we actually use a generic ultrasonic distance sensor to get distance readings and when the rover is close enough to the object, the rover can open its robotic sled, go in front and actually pick up the object and then again, go back into face detection mode and come find you. Now you might have noticed that the video samples I've shown you up till this point actually have quite jumpy detections and not very stable sizes. So you might be wondering how is the robot so easily able to detect where the object is and you know, correct for all these slight variations. It actually uses a quite simple averaging algorithm that takes in the last three data points, that means the last three position or size values and averages it to do any of its movement calculations. This effectively 
smooths out any jitters or any sort of outliers and makes the robot a lot more stable. For the sake of time and simplicity, I've actually oversimplified a lot about how this rover's computer vision and machine learning models work. So if you want a more in-depth explanation, you can find that in the Instructables build guide that I've written down in the description below. Moving on, let's cover the actual physical hardware that makes that rover work. Now the rover itself is powered by the fantastic Roboclaw motor controllers. I used them in my last Arduino project and they were so seamless to integrate that I decided to use them again for this project. The Roboclaws worked excellently with the rover's built-in DC brushed motors, giving me extremely precise control thanks to the Roboclaws ability to use motor encoder data to do very precise position control. This was especially critical for the robotic sled and the front of the rover, which needed to open and close a very specific amount, allowing it to pick up an object correctly. Moving on, the next electronics that we'll cover is a USB webcam. Now I use the Logitech generic USB webcam, and you can use any USB webcam you want as well. Now this project will work with the Raspberry Pi camera, but the Raspberry Pi camera doesn't come with the built-in microphone, which means that if you want to do voice recognition with this rover, you will need an external USB microphone or you could just use a USB webcam which comes with a built-in USB microphone. Lastly, for the brains of this computer, I use the Raspberry Pi 3 microprocessor and the Google Coral USB accelerator to handle the image recognition. The reason I had to use a Google Coral USB accelerator is because the Raspberry Pi could barely handle 1 to 2 frames of image recognition and this was with 100% CPU usage. That means if I did it on the Raspberry Pi, I would not be able to do any sort of motor control, any sort of voice recognition, or anything else on the Raspberry Pi. Furthermore, one to two frames per second on the Raspberry Pi was very slow and made the robot very sluggish. With the Google Coral USB accelerator, I was getting about 10 frames per second for any sort of video recognition, which was much faster and very reliable. Plus, it was only using about 30% of the Raspberry Pi CPU power, which meant that I could use the remaining 70% for voice recognition, motor control, robot movement, and anything else. Moving on, this robot uses the commonly available Rover 5 robotic tank platform. I chose this robot platform because it came with tank treads and was easily available worldwide, making it much easier for anyone else to replicate this project. And lastly, all the remaining parts, such as the robotic sled, the gears for the sled, the webcam mount, the motor mount, and the shell of the robot were all 3D printed and you can download the 3D printable files down in the description below as this is an open source project. And that's it for this robot project. Now I'd love to do a follow up version of this rover where I add features such as a fully integrated voice assistant with natural language processing. Now that would be quite useful because this rover can actually follow you around and always be within hearing distance of your commands and you know have all the benefits of a full voice assistant like giving you any information you need, etc. A secondary cool upgrade to this robot can be a robotic arm that can help you hold things, perhaps can help open the door and do other more nuanced tasks that the robotic sled can't do. If you have any thoughts or ideas for a version two of this rover, do let me know down in the comments below and also do check out the full Instructables build guide that I've linked down in the description below. The Instructables build guide has all the project files available for download, it has all the code, available for download and you can also learn more about the struggles and challenges I faced while building this robot and more in-depth details about how this robot actually works. Anyway, thanks for watching.